veterans. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of my mic. Oh, my webcam is in the wrong place. Of Pete and Jeremy's D and D time. I am Jeremy, and we are joined by a fantastic uh, cast of characters tonight. So, without further ado, let's introduce everyone. Uh, Chogal Hammerfist of the Soothing Voice was here last week, and he's back again. Karos. I mean, not Karos. I meant Chogal. Chogal. <laughs> Who is this Karos you speak of? He's one of your other adventurers. Oh. Hi, Karos. Hello there. Soothing voice. Sir. It has been not long since I've been here last. How are you guys doing? Well, I- I'm doing pretty well. How How about you? What, what have you been doing in your, your week off? Practicing my different voices. Oh, can you give it Nobody actually you? knows how many voices I can do because I've only really done this one. But it's a choice, dang it. Oh, how many voices can you do? Oh, I've got many. I've even got a, uh, well, it's, it's a little embarrassing, but I have an impression of a famous hero. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Can I hear it? Sure, uh, l- let me see. <clears throat> Hello, everyone! It is I, oh. Kuragon! <laughs> I, th- I uh, think that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Switch for a second. Ah, uh, oh. dang it, I must- I had to fix it. You might need to work on that one a little bit more, Chogo. <laughs> work more on your impressions. But, uh, You're right, welcome. I'm not good enough yet. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep going. Um, welcome! Uh, next for tonight, we have Karos, Wrath of Khan, the Wrath of Conch. Now, Karos, did I spell that right? Is that is it the Wrath of Conch, or is it the Wrath of Conch? <laughs> well, uh, in, in my native language, it is Conch, but uh, you, you dry tongues uh, can just say Conch, if you please. I see. It's it's the common the common dialect. I understand. Well, yes. Kiros, it's been a while since we've seen you here. Welcome back to D and D time. Uh, it it is good to be back. I, I come with uh, great news. The conch uh, is very happy with uh, my exploits to the surface, and uh, I have brought much conflict and uh, testing oh. and might making. I see. So, Karos, you're here. You come to the surface to to bring conflict, uh, to uh, test the will of the conch against uh, the mightiest foes of the land and the sky. Only through testing can we achieve achieve true greatness. I see. Well, Karos, uh, that's good. I think. Um, but you know, I mean, to each to each their own. Um, well, Karos, I guess uh, welcome back to, to D&D time. Do you have any exciting plans for the future? Uh, just uh, spreading the good word of the conch to all I see. All righty. Well, welcome back. Uh, uh, next, we have Sotaria Avenia. Uh, our favorite wood elf rogue refuses a title. Uh, as what is it a stand against Bartholomew, or do you just not need a title for people to fear your name? Both. Oh, oh, okay. Have you have you pilfered anything good since I last seen you? I know. How many what? times do I have to tell you if you ask me what I've been pilfering, I got to kill you? That's a fair question. Have have you come? Have you just come across any interesting items that were not stolen at all in? The time since your last adventure here? Oh, yes, I got plenty of those. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah? seriously. The the land of the has been such a great boon. I'm so happy you guys introduced me to the place. Where was that again? Where did you mention? Ag. Ag oh, mm. Ag, yes, yeah, sorry. You're you roboted out for one moment there when you were uh, when oh. you were saying it. Hey, who is this robot? I didn't prove any robots. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm crazy. Well, uh, so you've been uh, you've been hanging out in Ag. How have uh, how's it been towering above all of the dwarves there? Oh, they oh it's oh you have no idea. I've been treated like a princess. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, you know what? That's always good to uh, always good to hear. Uh, our adventure is doing well. 
And how is your uh, your little quickling servant done? Is he has he gotten away yet? Gotten away from me? Honestly, I, mean, he'd be, he'd cry, I imagine. I doubt it. He likes it. he likes it with me too much. I'm like, oh, really? unlike certain, unlike certain people, I know how to treat my minions with kindness and respect, as long as they bring me pretty shiny things, like <laughs> well, that last lovely, like that last lovely gemstone he bought me. Oh man, that was a big, that was a big rock. Well, you know, I'm I'm glad things are are going well for you, uh, Sataria. Um, it's always it's always good to hear hear everything going great. And uh, speaking of everything going great who who's that who's that in the corner there hello darling he lives <laughs> yes for those of you uninitiated my name is Baxter Riswell old grave digger and I've been departed from this coil for quite some time. You see, I've figured at some point I would be able to take advantage of Bartholomew's ability to bring individuals back almost as on a whim, almost as though it was an automated function. It took a while to figure it out, but once I did, well, my studies ended up taking me elsewhere on the other side, you see. And I had been revealed so many great secrets, so many great steps to knowing on how my mission will end up unfolding. And yet it was not my time to pass. Now, after so long, I have finally returned I got more holes to dig and many individuals who need to fill them. So I'm here again, oh, Jeremy. And it seems if things go the way they seem to be going, the dear Wood Elf might be asking me to dig you a hole as well. I hope not. <laughs> Is that Baxter? Buddy, you haven't seen you in forever! Oh, Chogall, Chogall. It's good to see a friendly... Well, I was about to say a friendly face, but uh, glad to see your voice is still singing as ever. Now, as for one last little tidbit, I did happen to go back home, and it seems to me that that group that I'd taken on to help out has been doing quite well for themselves. Who imagined the entire graveyard might relocate and find themselves building a small settlement of their own? <laughs> it's been helping with my studies. I see. You know, I can't help but feel slightly more intimidated than now than maybe maybe been before you you came back. No, oh, why is that, Derry? I don't know. Something something about a man who's been dead for about six months just kind of showing back up. You still have a little bit of dirt on your on your collar, by the way. Oh, uh, uh, well, occupational hazard. <laughs> well, Baxter, welcome back to D D time. Pleasure. Uh, and I'm sure the first thing you want to do is go out on a ridiculous adventure. <laughs> so uh, here, here we go. I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities for uh, not or uh, Baxter. Last I remember, you didn't. You were more the caretaker of of those who needed to be buried. Is that? Uh, is That's that very the much the case. Okay. Yes. See, uh, I'm a humble grave digger. I do the thing that people don't want to be done. The sad truth of it is, is that everybody doesn't want to end up digging a hole for their loved ones. Hard to see them put in the ground. That's why I'm here. That's why I am necessary, dear. There's the old theory. 
Well, welcome back, uh, Baxter. Uh, I'm going to try and keep the spirits up, despite digging down. Tonight, uh, our tonight's adventure is called A Sword in a Stone. Um, you all have been hired, as Bartholomew's adventures tend to be, uh, to head into the Sacred <coughs> Vale, which is a holy forest in the northeast uh, of the land of D&D time. Uh, a, a valiant knight by the name of Sir Dan has hired you. Uh, and he seeks your aid in recovering uh, what he claims to be a, a sword that is wedged in a stone. Um, we join in with this adventure uh, as you all have made your way to the northeast, to the edge of the Sacred Vale, uh, a land of divine, holy, and uh, evil magic, for lack of a better term, um, all the same. And you stand outside, or in the middle of the forest, really, and Sir Dan rides up to you on his horse. Uh, and this knight wears pl uh, shining plate mail. His horse is somewhat thin and lanky, uh, and it is clear that beneath his armor he is also lanky. Um, as, the, as he clanks uh, and clatters as he moves up towards you, and he uh, looks down from atop his mount. Why, hello! Uh, and so that's what I said. Put him up, partner. Oh, are you, are you Sir Dan? I am Sir Dan. Uh, uh, yes. are, are you my hero? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are your champions. Fantastic. Uh, my voice. <clears throat> Fantastic. Uh, and he looks uh, down away. He kind of dismounts from his horse with a loud clatter of, uh, of plate mail, and looks toward you. Uh, looks toward each of you. My my rivals, uh, he tells you that his my rivals have found a magical sword in this forest, and I need your help to get it. Yes, uh, we will smite down your rivals, and they will not take your property. Well. Uh, he, he speaks um, man my voice is totally off today I apologize um, he says ah no we, we cannot defeat them uh, we should not fight them it is not the knightly way we must there is no reason them. to fight them P precisely Arthur must not have the sword uh, and he gestures down the path please ride with me Arthur what does Arthur sound familiar that's probably nothing. Let's go. Uh, okay. Well, Sir Dan jumps up on his horse uh, and begins to trot down the path ahead of you. Um, uh, do you all just kind of... I, you all follow along. Um, and before long, you come to a large, just uh, large clearing. Uh, it's all grass. There are the big oak trees all over the place. The sun shines down in this clearing. And in the center, there is a massive, uh, just normal gray stone boulder with a sh gleaming golden blade sticking out of it. Um, you see Sir Dan, he is standing next to his horse, kind of patting it. Um, the horse seems annoyed, perhaps. Um, its ears are back, it's, it's flustered. Uh, and you see about six other knights, uh, with, all with their own horses, in a circle around the boulder, just kind of scratching the chins of their helmets. They're all wearing just these same uh, large helmets with like a gridded... Uh, visor so you don't see any of them um any of their faces but one of them their helmet has a large red feather that kind of sticks out of the top and the other knights are all looking at the rock and sir dan's kind of off to the side uh, looking kind of bummed out you know why don't we just take the rock and the sword somewhere it's a very large rock now uh <laughs> as you know uh rocks are the natural enemies of water and uh, if you just give me a few dozen years, I'm sure then the power of water can uh, destroy this pesky rock. Uh, I don't think we have a few have dozen a years. Few dozen years. <laughs> so impatient. Impatient? Look, I'm an elf. But at the same time, I would like to do other things than let you wear down a rock. And it would seem our other guests would not enjoy the time to wait. So, As so you have this conversation, uh, a little bird flies down and lands on your shoulder, Baxter. It's a cardinal. 
Oh. It just tweets at you. Well. Then you to fly away. <laughs> Hello there, little friend. You see, a few more, you see a few more birds flying around. They're flying very, very close. Uh, Sataria, uh, about three birds fly over, and they're carrying this uh, kind of circular garland of flowers that makes like a necklace, and they just drop it over your neck and fly away. Um, what's going on? Sir <laughs> uh, Tim looks toward you all. Ah, this is the Sacred Veil. It is a divine and holy place. Uh, it seems to have affected the wildlife to some degree. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. I'm gonna hold up my finger for a bird to land on. Uh, why, why is it? Why is it that every single time I come into a forest, I automatically get confused with other <clears throat> of my race? An, an eagle lands on your on your arm, Choco. Yeah, I'm gonna so pet the eagle. Is like bald eagle. <laughs> I'm gonna pet the eagle. <laughs> uh, Good these boy. are vile. These are vile creatures of the cloud. They cannot be trusted. Don't listen to him. You're plenty trustworthy, buddy. Uh, the eagle attacks you. <laughs> ah! No! Bad eagle! Oh, Betrayal! I, I mistyped. Uh, is 14 going to hit you, Chogal? No. Right. Bad eagle! It, it attempts to peck at your finger and then flies away when you yell at it. <laughs> it looks like you're still a winner with the wildlife. Mm. Whatever. I'm, I'm gonna go over to the, uh, Sword in the Stone. It's gonna lean against the sword a bit. Uh, as you, uh, approach, the other- one of the other knights steps forward. Bolt! I am Sir Bradford. You may not travel any closer. We, the knights of the round table, were here first, and claim first priority upon pulling the sword from the stone. You must wait your turn. Oh, uh, fair. All right. <laughs> Like, he goes back so to the other night. Uh, yes, yeah, Sir Dan looks to you. Yes! Are you waiting your turn, or is this a case of you'd like us to force the issue? He kind of sighs and frowns. Yes, it is unfortunate. They have beaten us here, and without a, a contest of any sort, I have no right to claim first dib. Oh. Well, is there any way we could, like, Challenge them or something? <laughs> hmm. P perhaps, although I am still too weak to do that. And well, look at him, I'm not. <laughs> you can tell that his Those... armor is is like way super loose fitting, and he's he's fairly short for what you would consider a knight. <laughs> Believe yeah, in the bro. conch, and he shall strengthen you, and we can defeat your foe. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> Well, um... so Tara is looking over at him and basically look is basically like, at least with the cloud followers, she doesn't have this. It doesn't have to hear this rhetoric over and over again. Don't worry, so Tara, I get it too. I don't care about the cloud conch fight. I'm just kind of here. <laughs> What's the clouds? Oh, uh, some religious is, cult or something like the that. The point is, <laughs> if you would like to challenge them to the fight. Perhaps, um, a knightly joust, but you would need to become honorary members of my oblong table. Okay. What are we going to do? Well, you must kneel before me and I will knight you. He says he goes to pull his sword uh, from the scabbard and it kind of gets stuck. It takes him like maybe like 10, 15 seconds to actually get it out. Uh, do you have to be the one to knight us? Can anyone else knight us? Um... Come on now, Chogo. Live a little, darling. The horse <sighs> is technically a part of the table. All right, have him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, I just okay. Let's get this over with. <laughs> okay. Don't yeah, cut off my head, or I swear to God, I'll kill you. He does not look strong enough. He looks like he's having a lot of trouble lifting the sword. Like it's pretty heavy for him. Somebody help him lift uh, it. <laughs> Yeah, you'd imagine, you'd think he might be like just like a little kid inside of this armor. Like, it does not seem like a full grown man. But he, he holds out the sword uh, and knights you, uh, Cho'Gal, um, and looks to the rest of you. 
is if to be question, would you also like to be knighted? I will. And Baxter takes a it t take he's he's old and feeble, right? He's he's hanging on to the shovel as he uh, slowly lowers himself to a knee, hanging on to it almost as though he needs more of a walking staff than anything. Okay, yeah. So you you go down on your knee. <clears throat> Uh, it's, it's a bit of a uh, an ordeal, but he, Sir Dan holds the sword and knights you. I pronounce you knight of the oblong table. Uh, and he lifts the sword away. And as you go to like stand up, you look to the side and like somehow in this time, a deer has walked into the clearing and the deer like uses its neck to help you get up, to like help prop you up. What kind of, uh, uh, okay. I guess it don't case. like me. <laughs> what was that? Oh yeah, um, yeah. The deer is not fooled. Uh, Baxter requires actually no issue whatsoever. He's just playing up the fact that he's, you know, he's eighty years old, so he would appear to be decrepit and useless. Well, Matt, you're missing a very important thing. The deer has an intelligence of one, so <laughs> maybe it's fooled. Uh... <laughs> thank, thank you, friend. Thank you. Pats uh... it on the head. Rolls Karos. a nat one, gets a negative nine on there. <laughs> Kara, Sotaria, do you two also get knighted? I well, bow, I bow before no man. I <laughs> shall not bow before a mortal. And I right. bow before no man. Now, um, if you wish, you could bow before me, and uh, I will anoint you. Uh... <laughs> you want me a persuasion check? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that 20. Come on, that 20. What are the perks of joining the conch? <laughs> ah, an anointment is never bad. And he, he does that. He, he goes and bows in the ground. <laughs> do, you, do you just leave him there? I I um I sprinkle some some water, some salt water from a pouch that I have onto him. Okay, his armor rusts a little bit while you sprinkled the water. As if cursed by the conch. <laughs> water him. Uh, but yep, he doesn't notice because it's on his head. And uh, yeah, you guys, uh, so Taria and Karos not knighted. Uh, so Chogal, only you or Baxter can participate in this joust directly. Fine, don't worry about it. Uh, so as you as you all approach uh, the other knights, Sir Dan's behest, uh, the knight uh, who stopped you before, Sir Bradford, walks over. Halt! I am Sir Bradford. Yeah, I've heard the story. We challenge you for the right to pull the sword. To a joust. Uh, a friendly joust. Uh, he looks toward his other knights. They wish to joust. The other knights. A joust? A joust? A joust. Very well, one of the knights says. The one with the big uh, red fluff. We will accept your challenge. And the knights uh, step forward. Uh, two of them seemingly not actually knights. Two of them seem to just be retainers. Uh, still dressed in plate mail very nicely. Uh, but the four knights step forward and look towards you. The way a knightly joust will simply work is each of us will state a stipulation that must occur for the joust. And then the joust will begin. He looks uh, towards the other knights and the first knight says... Uh, then the joust will take place on a horse. The next knight says, and the combatants must use a lance as their weapon. The third knight says, uh, they must greet each other with uh, friendship in their hearts and shake hands before the battle. Uh, and the third one says, I have nothing to add. <laughs> and then it's up to you guys. Do you guys want to add any stipulations to this? Uh, and so Taria is gagging all the way this is going on. Okay, Taria, <laughs> just like, ugh, this is repulsive. Chogol okay. thinks for a moment. Mm. Okay. Chogol, uh, now think of your natural abilities. Is there something that could uh, give you an advantage? Um, let's see. I'm, I'm really good at running and jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have to uh, ride the horse uh, standing up. Ah, that's a good <laughs> idea. A 
Okay! <laughs> you have to ride the horse standing up! <laughs> you think it's kind of suggested, and they're like, what? And then you say it, so go, and Sir Bradford steps forward. Uh, no, that cannot be. And uh, the knight with the red fluffy hair says, That's the rules! That was the stipulation to the rule. You'll ride standing up. All right, uh, I'm gonna. I believe that that uh, means I have one last stipulation if Chokal is uh, indeed to be our representative. No, all four of you can make a stipulation. It's just only, no. one, only of you two can ride. Can I only one of us. Chogal. Yep. <laughs> You'll be our rider. All right. The stipulation is as such. He ends up grabbing hold of. He reaches into his bag, pulls out what appears to be something, a, a large, larger bag inside of his backpack. What? Walks so over. Cool. <laughs> walks over to his the stone, and proceeds to bash it against there. And you hear the shattering of glass. Lots of glass. And it's at this point, as he ends up doing so, <sighs> press the digitation. Okay. I am going to drag this along the field. The joust will yeah, happen upon broken glass. <laughs> and oh, sorry. But while he's laying down the glass, the glass is only on their side. Yeah. Oh, shit, but you're making fake glass. Nice. I dig oh, it. Oh, that is so great. <laughs> that is really clever. Uh, I'm in. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. None of them are going to notice that some, something so small like that. Um, with the prestidigitation, they're just freaked out and they look real confused. Uh, they're not looking at your side, they're looking at their side. Excellent. I trust that makes everything even. He takes hold of a piece of glass and <laughs> starts to crunch on it a bit. Oh. <laughs> Pulls out some of his sheep teeth. Very, very good. <laughs> That'll work. Okay. You guys got that a fine. <laughs> that's a fine ad addition. Uh, I would like to uh, state my stipulation. Uh, I would like to give each of our champions a uh, firm embrace. That is my stipulation. The knights all nod. This is a good a stipulation they like. They approve. All right. I go around. <laughs> I go around and, and well, I, I hug <laughs> each one. So oh, okay. the first stipulation first. Okay. <laughs> Sotaria, what stipulation do you add to this, this nightly joust? Ah, I have a very good stipulation. Sure. <laughs> Never mind, I don't have one. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you guys, you guys continue on. I'm just going to um watch the <coughs> Tom <Fuller. coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what came over me. Um, <coughs> yeah, the knights nod. Especially the one on the other side who didn't say anything. Nods like, oh, thank God, someone said nothing. Uh, uh, and you uh, all uh, kind of line up and uh, get ready. Uh, Chogal, do you have a mount or do you need to borrow Sir Dan's? I'm going to have to borrow Sir Dan's. <laughs> okay, you get on this like weak sad looking horse yeah. if uh, only i had summons oh if only <laughs> if um... uh you can see that you, the knight you are jousting against is uh, is sir bradford the knight who had challenged you before he, now uh, hold now hold on i have not yet had my embrace of the uh, champions of course Get so he goes around and he, and he hugs every one of them and leaves just this terrible smelling <laughs> Slime on every one of them, <laughs> and as he approaches uh, Corrigan, he gives him a handshake. Chogal, Chogal, sorry. <laughs> you, all you surface dwellers, you know I can't keep your your strange names straight in my head. Uh, but and as he grasps uh, your hand, uh, he casts uh, enhance ability. Oh shit! Uh, Cat's grace. So you have advantage on all your dexterity checks for the next hour. 
that's going to be super helpful balancing standing on a horse. Uh, also, um, if you fall off, you don't take damage. <laughs> you all notice that as, uh, as you all have all been preparing for this joust, it looks like the two uh, smaller knights, the squires, have still been going to work, like, looking at the rock. Uh, and they seem to be setting up some kind of stuff or, or something around it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what it is. It's like got wood and string or rope. It's really strange. You don't know what they're doing. Um, but they're like building something around the big stone. Um, and Sir Dan tells you that uh, per the rules, they, they, do, they can continue whatever they're doing until we have first dibs. Oh. Uh, I was kind of curious. Mm-hmm. Is that deer still around? Yeah, it's just standing nearby uh, eating some flowers. <clears throat> I like the cut of its jib. Okay. So long as they're not on a grave, I'm happy. There, are a, few, there are a few birds on it. Mm-hmm. Standing on it. Hey, little guy. Wondering. You wouldn't happen to have a really big brother right now. One with a temper on it, would it? Yeah. Uh, can you roll me a animal handling check, Baxter? No, eh, twelve. Uh, it's not bad. The deer gives you a look um, that's like, uh, <clears throat> "What if I do look?" Well, he reaches in and <clears throat> kind of secretly palms towards the deer, pretending not to act. Like there's anything. Meanwhile, inside he might have a carrot and some delicious veggies. You know, fresh put it from the garden, and this time it doesn't have to steal from it, a garden to get it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you advantage on that roll for that 19 <laughs> uh, for that for those garden veggies. It uh, it it chows down. The little birds fly away, uh, and it uh, runs off into the forest. Gurgan might have a mount for you. Jogal! <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys get confuse me all the time. I, I keep hearing about this Kuragon, Kuragon, my new roommate. She just won't shut up about him. <laughs> all right. So... It, it was it was that wonderful accent you did earlier. It, it threw us all off. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Jeremy didn't seem to buy it. Well, Jogal, so you you get ready. Uh, you uh, help Sir Dan get some armor on the horse because horses must wear barding to joust. So you take about 40 minutes or so total in preparation. We do not have a bard to attach to this <laughs> to uh, the steed. Yes, it looks like the knights did have a bard to tie to the side of their steed, so they are they're extra protected. Uh, and uh, while doing that, I'm actually uh, while I'm putting on armor and stuff, I'm going to bless myself and the uh, the horse. <laughs> okay, yeah, you you cast bless on yourself and the horse, and uh, right as you're just about ready to go, there is a rustling in the bushes nearby, um, and a few moments later. Uh, a giant, like, a giant elk just kind of charges out of the woods, except it isn't a normal-looking elk. Its skin and fur is all black. It has, like, red fire in its eyes and some very large kind of spiked horn. Uh, and it snorts angrily and aggressively and looks right at you, Baxter. Yeah. Yeah, I like you. I like you a lot, Jogal found your mount. What? The oh, oh. The <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind there. of imagining this. This elk's like twice the size of yeah. bad, this oh. old man Baxter. Baxter has about a the, the shit eating grin on his face, whereas this thing looks just righteously pissed off. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Work. So, Jogal, are you gonna try and convince this 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 giant elk to let you ride it? Um. Didn't one of the stipulations say it had to take place on a horse? No, oh. it said you had to ride. That's so right. Have, yeah, I think actually they did say you had to ride. Uh, I don't ride. say what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay, so well, you go over to this giant elk, uh, and I need you to, I guess, animal handling, or how are you gonna convince the giant angry demon elk to let you? It's definitely a demon elk. Like there's demon blood in this elk. 
That's probably why it came running when Baxter asked. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Uh, I suppose I'm going to try to uh, convince it that, that it likes me. You're gonna probably try likes to me. Talk to it. Okay. Yeah. Hey there, big guy. Use that soothing voice. How's it going? Lots of pets. You're a good man, yeah. It was a pretty <laughs> dear. Can, can you roll me an animal handling check, Joe Gall? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't seem to like you that much, and it attacks you with its antlers. It's got a 17 to hit. Does that that doesn't hit with my shield. <laughs> okay, the antlers almost hit you, and you parry them away with your shield, uh, and it snorts angrily and kind of uh, faces around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely the guy. We, that's definitely the mount we need. Uh, one of the knights calls out, "The joust shall begin now! Hurry up and pick your mount." Does Does anyone have something that can calm this beast? I can try. I'm going to use command. Calm. <laughs> it 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 says creature. It says creature. Jesus. Okay. Um, well, it has magic resistance. Uh, uh, so it's got advantage on that, but its wisdom modifier is bad. Okay. So it fails, I think. Yep. Uh, and <laughs> it spends its next turn calming down. And I am going All to right. climb on it as it happens. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell Six you what. Six seconds later, it's now pissed off again. But you're on it now. Yeah. All right. Now, if you, he, currently eyeballing this thing. Now, if you want to remember the whole reason that this is happening, you see that mount right there? It points to the mount of the uh, <laughs> the opposing rider. Which it was a very large horse, but now it's kind of a small horse compared to. <laughs> that thing's fault. <laughs> the uh, the elk just kind of like glances up at Shogal and snorts angrily. Little bits of smoke come out of its nostrils. Uh, you're not. That was his fault. <laughs> uh, no. And what, Karis? Shogal, do you do you have a uh, <clears throat> a lance? Um, he takes out his beard. Does this count? <laughs> Uh, no, but Sir Dan does have a lance that you can use. Oh, I'll use that. <laughs> All right. All right. You, you get in line, I guess. Uh, and you joust? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, so, J Jeremy, I guess I'd be curiosity before we continue any further. Everyone's please. attention is on this joust, right? Uh, except for the two squires who are over at the Sword and the Stone. Good. I'm about to go and uh, pilfer some saddlebags and some tents. Um, oh, that's all. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Can you roll me a, a sleight of hand check? Or actually, just a stealth check, but I'm going to give you advantage. Uh, because, damn, yeah, you wouldn't need sleight of hand for that. You need stealth. Uh, now, do I notice the two squires? Oh, absolutely. Everyone does. Holy shit, you're so stealthy. <laughs> all right, Sataria, you pilfer through all of their things. Uh, you find a map of a kingdom. Uh, it is uh, lo uh, labeled Camelot. Uh, you find uh, another scroll, like a, a spell scroll of some kind, actually. Um, you're not entirely certain. Uh, you find, let's find how many torches. Uh, you find 10 torches. Wow, there's a lot of torches in their bags. Uh, you find a ton of rations, must be all of their food for their adventure. Uh, based on the map, by the way, of Camelot uh, and of the land of D&D &D time, uh, they're probably, like, weeks away from home. So this is all of their food for weeks. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of food. You find uh, a, not a large sum of gold, uh, but you find about, oh, damn. You find eight pieces of platinum, uh, which are worth ten gold each. Uh, and they're very, very shiny. And you find some uh, some uh, holy symbols, uh, which are beautifully crafted pieces of gold and silver, elegantly uh, crafted 
them, bearing symbols of different gods. Was there anything in particular you were looking for? Oh, you also find all of their changes of clothes. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> um, first off, anything of value, including the rations and the torches and everything like that, gets taken. <laughs> Even the and then lastly, I decide to go and take their spare clothes <laughs> and literally just go and toss them in the forest. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right, can you owe me a second spell check? But this is just to see how well you hide them. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're never finding it. You found a, a beehive in a big hole in a tree, and you managed to take the beehive out without the bees coming after you, stuff all of their clothes in there, and then put the beehive back in. Uh, you don't think it's possible for them to find it. Um, Man, I haven't had this much fun in a while. Okay, um, let's see. Anything else? Nope, I think that's good. So then I go back and I go and uh, lean back against the tree where I was, basically like, mm, I'm not giving no any care about this. Mm. Yep, excellent. So okay, we are I'm now done. to the joust. Uh, Chogo, uh, first, yep. first things first. So the horses are going to go. Uh, Oh, God. So their horse starts to, like, charge. So the way a joust works is you have a wooden shield that you're given. And Don't we have to do, win. like, acrobatics or something to be standing on the horse? Well, yeah, but you're going to want... Your, your goal is to hit the shield. Uh, if you hit the shield, you get two points. If you break the shield, you get four points. Yeah! Uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> the goal is not to hit the people. So Okay! Right. Um... See, so yeah, at first, their ho his horse starts to go, but stepping on all of the glass, its speed gets halved, and it gets, like, all uh, resty. so the guy's gonna have disadvantage to stay on the horse. So if they both, if he stands up and you stand up, can you roll me a acrobatics check? I'm gonna roll his now with... With advantage, because... Hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have advantage. And a, a d4 from your blessed. Yeah, um, that's at that. <laughs> So, <laughs> Level three! <laughs> 19 acrobatics! <laughs> he is not able to uh, stay on the horse and immediately, like, falls off. Uh, and he is able to, like, grab onto the side of the horse, though. So he's hanging off the side. His lance is pointed straight up into the air. His arms <laughs> filling out, and he's all disoriented. Uh, the horse keeps going forward, though, just slightly. Is his shield still available? To hit. Uh, it, it is, but it's waving off to the side. Um, and you can go ahead and make me an attack roll with your strength modifier. All right. To, uh, I'm just going to use my spear because it's the same thing. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. 22 will absolutely hit you. Uh, and nine points of damage. Yeah. You uh, spear the shield, but do not break it off. Actually, it's not quite the same. Uh, Lance does a different damage. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I believe a lance should do a d10, but I'll look it up right now for you. Uh, lance, how much damage do you do? <laughs> yeah, come on, really. Um, <laughs> I was gonna d12. give him a spiritual weapon for this, and it could have. Yeah, it's a 1d12, so let me just uh, 1d12 plus. 1d12 plus 4. Four. If you do 10 or 11. Okay, so you shatter uh, his shield. You get four points. Uh, you don't hit him, uh, and he is embarrassed as he gets uh, all messed around. Um, they got screwed up. <laughs> unfortunately, now you're on the other side where oh. the glass is, and right. you're going around for round two. Um, your uh, your giant elk is going to roll a con saving throw. See what happens uh, regarding. All right, so he gets kind of spiked up, uh, and he's not happy. Uh, and he's, he's pissed as he's stepping on glass. Um, you come around for a second go. Uh, he get the other guy gets a new shield, um, and I need you to roll me another deck saving throw. Same with him. He is now rolling normally. You're rolling at disadvantage. Oh, jeez. Normal because I have advantage. Yes. Yeah. So even with the uh, even with the mess up, uh, yeah, you're uh, you fall off kind of like he did comically, um, and your strength elk saving passing. throw. <laughs> uh, yes, I need you to roll me a strength saving throw now. Oh, jeez. But you don't grab on and you fall off. Uh, your elk makes an attack against you with advantage because you're prone. 17 still misses. You're yeah. able to, like, offend it. Oh, actually, you don't get your shield benefit from this uh, ornamental shield. Does that still oh. get it? Yeah. 
Uh, oh, I was going to say, he shouldn't take damage from falling, but if it's an attack... No, it's from the elk. Uh, the elk stomps on you for 21 points of damage. Ow! Ow! Stop it! <laughs> and the, the knight rides by, uh, and he makes his attack, which he's drawing with a plus five. No, I thought we weren't supposed to attack the rider, and I, he clearly did. I saw it with my eyes. Uh, uh, and the, he spears your shield. Uh, he, he got a, a 20 total to hit, or a 23. Four and four. So yeah, it's four and four, and we go around for round three. Uh, yeah. You're now on the good side again. Oh, thank God. <laughs> The elk seems like pretty pleased now that he's kicked you once, and he lets you get back on. Uh, Thanks. Sorry. He he licks he licks your wounds a little bit, uh, in like a demeaning way. Um, and yeah, you go around for the third round. Uh, and as you guys are doing this, there's a lot of noise and clattering and yelling. Uh, you can see that the squires have almost finished building whatever they were building over by the store in the stone. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna wander over there and and talk to them. Okay, the squire looks at you. Oh, hey, how's it going? Now, what oh, wait, is you're, it? You're Karos. You're the Wrath of Conch. Yes, oh, man. Uh... And he kind of like pulls open his uh his armor, which it's not actually plate armor. You know those like pajamas that look like suits. That's what they're wearing, <laughs> but it's plate armor. And oh beneath it, there's a big like there's a t-shirt with like the symbol of the conch on it. Uh, and he's like, oh, will you sign my shirt? Oh, uh, yes, I will. And he leaves this big slime. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I imagined it being way cooler. Uh, yes, it is. It is quite warm. Uh, what is it that you gentlemen are building? Oh, wait, we're going to break the rock. Yeah, see, my friends over here thought that that was a preposterous idea. And uh, it seems like you two... Uh, have the right right of it um so would you mind just uh going ahead and doing that and um afterwards just hand me that sword all right yeah well sure anything for you uh the other squire is just like dude and i'm gonna stand here and supervise <laughs> okay so, Sheriff, they continue putting, they finish their contraption and Chogol, they go for a last ride. Uh, the knight's going to roll his deck save with disadvantage. He falls uh, and falls onto the ground like an idiot. Uh, can you just roll to stay on your horse? Uh, what's the, I rolled a 21. I oh, damn. Rolled. So, yeah, yeah, you go right up. Go ahead and make your attack with advantage. He's on the ground uh, cr crying. And holding at his knee. Oh wow! Yeah, and you shatter his shield, uh, winning the contest. Yeah! Uh, and you cheer, Sir Dan. Yep. Cheers. Uh, and the knights all uh, kind of look disappointed. Uh, and they all line up to shake your hand and say, "Good game." Good joust. Yeah, good joust. Good joust. <laughs> and all of the knights line up and shake your hand, even though they're all super dejected. Uh, however, just at this moment. The squires finish their thing and they pull a lever and all of these little wooden boxes that they've put all around the stone open up and big balloons come out uh, and there's a shifting uh, for a moment in the earth as the rock begins to float up into the air uh, very quickly actually. You treacherous clouds! Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, give me a second. I'm gonna throw a spear at it. <laughs> Okay. I'm on top of the rock. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> it's, it's your turn. So Dan's like, we must get it. It's going away. Make it. And he turns to the other knights. Make it come back down. Uh, and the other knights are like, ah, but it is not our turn to deal with the rock. Uh, and uh, the rock begins <laughs> to fly up away with Baxter on top. Uh, what do you all do? The rock is 15 feet in the air. I right threw a spear. <laughs> Okay, Chogal, you throw a spear, a 13, you pop one of the eight balloons. It kind yeah. of shifts a little bit. At uh, the risk of, um, <clears throat> at the risk of being a one-note, uh, kind of, uh, spellcaster, I, I cast Shatter on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cast Shatter on the rock. <laughs> um, interesting. Okay, as you go to cast Shatter on the rock, nothing happens. Oh. Your magic just simply doesn't uh, just doesn't appear. 
uh, as the rock seems oh. to glow with uh, divine energy. Seems you oh, saved man. another day, Baxter. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, thank goodness that didn't work. Um, I'm going Baxter, to... Wait, wait just a second. Baxter, your turn was to teleport on the rock. Right? Yep. Okay, now Satari, sorry. I am going to shoot at one of those other balloons. Okay. Actually, wait, I got... Ooh, I got double shot. <laughs> Don't oh, I? Damn. Extra attack, go ahead. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's one. That'll hit. That's two. Uh, that will also actually hit, just barely though. The DC AC of the balloon is 10. Uh, you pop. Watch it. Can you give me the damage? They do have, they do have a hit point, but I don't think you can not pop them, actually. Yeah, you're gonna pop that balloon. Uh, and that one, no problem. Yeah, they have five hit points. You pop two balloons, you shoot them, and the thing, like, wavers pretty substantially. Uh, Baxter, you, like, have a little trouble, but you're still staying on top of this floating rock. Uh, and at the beginning of this second oh, dearie. Round, uh I will need everyone to roll for initiative because something actually is going to happen. Uh... Yeah, of course. <laughs> I never play a character with good initiative. And uh, Satari, can you give me your initiative? Excellent. Oh, Satari is on top of it. So, Satari, you're probably one to go first. However, oh, Baxter you all... actually, Baxter, what? Baxter got a four. So Baxter, <laughs> you, you see uh, Baxter rising out of the canopy not so far away. Rising. Uh, a, a small green dragon uh, what? <laughs> rises up out of the canopy uh, and seems just to be lazily flying around, but then notices you standing on top of a floating rock with a bunch of balloons and begins to fly towards you. Uh, oh, no. He is now... He is now visible from the clearing about 30 feet from you, Baxter, at the end of his turn. Uh, so, Taria, it's your turn. You see this dragon? Uh, it's just, it's a real dumb-looking dragon. It's just like, hey, a rock! I want it! <laughs> what would you like to do, Sataria? Um, I, um, am trying... I don't like shooting dragons, but at the same time, why uh -huh. is it so dumb looking? Um, I guess I'm going to try and um, shoot a arrow at the. Dr no, I take it back. How many balloons are left? Uh, there are five balloons left. Um, popping another two. We'll try to pop another two. One. Yeah, I, I mean you can crit fail, but that's yeah. No, you're <laughs> with your archery bonus. You just can't miss these guys. Uh, that being said, it is harder to hit them now that they're higher. Uh, their AC is going up to reflect their height. Um, AC is still going up, despite the fact that half the number of balloons have already been taken out. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Wow. It's going up. <laughs> they're blown up by, like, balloons. super helium or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so, Tara, you pop uh, two more balloons. <laughs> there are now three balloons left. It is teetering heavily. Baxter, can you roll me an athletics check? Or, I'm sorry, strength saving throw. Uh, Baxter, sorry, I was just trying to make the blue, um, trying not to make you go up any higher than what you are doing. Sorry, it's fine. <laughs> Baxter, Baxter, yeah, with a nimbleness that an old man should not have, you were able to, like, position yourself so you're not, like, falling off the rock. It's all that <laughs> casket lifting. <laughs> Lately, I've, I've run across this amazing road. You, you don't understand. See, recently I've uh, started doing a bit of exercise and found this really interesting program I am called Kuro Gains. <laughs> Dear me, it's been fantastic. It came full circle. Oh, God. <laughs> The dragon, it's the dragon's turn, it screams out, Nah, that's my rock! And it flies down toward you, Sotaria, and it breathes this caustic acid upon you. Uh, and I did roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, oh, I gotta roll its damage. Uh, Sotaria, can you roll me a con save? Oh, jeez. That's oh, a lot of damage to fail. That's a lot of fives. <laughs> Sotaria! Sotaria! Quack! Sorry, right, okay. did you say con save? <laughs> yes, please. It's all good. Oh, wow, that's not gonna be good. Well, it's a DC 11, it's not hot. Oh. Alright, you take 27 <laughs> points of 
uh, of poison damage. Uh, as this poisonous gas just uh, is emitted, the dragon breathes it upon you. Uh, how does Ataria feel about that? You oh. said 27 points of poison damage, right? Yes. I'm out. <laughs> the tar oh, no. just collapses uh, from the poison. Karos, it's your uh. turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am going to, as a bonus action, uh, do... Where'd it go? Oh, Healing word. You also notice, like, a dozen birds were flying up to Sotaria to put another garland on her, but they're all dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. There it is. <laughs> Uh, so as a bonus action, a healing word, you get six points. It's not much, but you're not dead. So Tara, you regain consciousness. Uh, <laughs> as, as my action, I'm going to cast command on the dragon. <laughs> and say, fetch. Oh, what do you, what do you, do you point to anything or do you just throw? The something? rock, the rock. Oh. I, I'm talking about the rock. <laughs> What's the uh, same with wisdom? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it gets like crazy spinning eyes and looks toward the dragon like a hungry, like, you know, like a dog that you've just held a stake in front of and it's kind of like panting and very excited. Like, okay. <laughs> Joke all, it's your turn. He the said it was like dumb. 30 feet in the air. Oh, well, uh, I guess spirit's not gonna work anymore. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I would advise not hurting the uh, dragon. He is returning the rock to us here momentarily. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm gonna go over to Sotaria so and like lay uh, lay on hands like ten points. <laughs> oh, okay, excellent. So Sotaria, you are alive again. Well, you're still alive, but now you're more alive. Uh, help <laughs> to offset all that poison. Hey, this will help you die less. Thank you. Bastard. Now, are you guys sure I can't kill the dragon? Not yet. <laughs> Baxter, Wait. you can stand atop the rock. What would you like to do? Baxter is currently gripping hold of that sword. Mm -hmm. And Baxter's got a plan. <laughs> See, okay. at, at, at about this distance, there's a pretty good chance this rock is oh, going to split in Baxter, two. Um, the sword oh. is super loose in the rock. Super loose, I could just take it out? Yeah. Why did no one inform me of this? <laughs> Body to check, apparently. Had, like, you had just assumed that the. No, no, had no, no. It? This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Uh huh. All right. Remember how I earlier made mention that I was digging a grave? Sure. I am going to. Misty Step with the sword. Okay. Into the grave, laying completely prone. Okay, you do that. Uh, no one's seen anything. <laughs> yeah, no one can even see you because you're on top of the rock right now. So and everybody's out, looking uh, up. Yeah, so no one, no one sees you. Uh, well, sure girl's helping Sotaria, but... Uh. <laughs> Sotaria, what would you like to do with your round? You sure I wouldn't? My passive, my passive perception is 15. You sure I haven't seen that? <laughs> I won't say anything, but at the same time, I'm just going to grin. <laughs> maybe you saw him disappear. Uh, and maybe. Um, we'll give you that. Okay. Um, I'm basically going to... Um, so, uh, question, gents. Um, we have a flying rock, and then we have a dragon. Um, how about I guess wait and see what happens? <laughs> Uh, yes, let's let's see how this turns out. Okay, the dragon spends its turn flying up to the rock, grabbing it, and then flying back down uh, as the rock comes hurtling back toward uh, everyone, uh, narrowly missing Sir Dan. Uh, and it slams Damn. back into the earth. Uh, there are only three balloons on it. It begins to slowly float back up, but with only three balloons, it's not going fast. Do we see the, sto the sword in it anymore? The sword appears to be gone. And at the end of the turn, the dragon's eyes kind of like stop and it blinks. My rock! 
<laughs> All yours, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, very good job, Sir Dragon. Uh, you get, you win a prize. You win this wonderful blo- rock along with free balloons. <laughs> Can you roll me a persuasion <laughs> check? <laughs> I'm really excited for the for this persuasion check. Yeah. Do you know how to know? It's my birthday! Oh my god. The rock the dragon looks away and just looks at the rock happily. Uh however, it looks like the knights all like draw their swords and begin to move forward toward the dragon. <laughs> I suggest no, no, we all no. no no, I suggest we all back away slowly. Let them fight the beast. Uh all right, let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Back it away. Baxter, Baxter, we're leaving now. <laughs> you don't see Baxter anywhere. I, I know, I'm just calling out. Baxter, grave digger. Sir Where Dan, have you gone? Sir Dan runs over to you all. Ah, you can't leave though. We don't have the sword. Shh, Sir Dan, don't worry. The sword's not in this stone anymore. He he just. Sir, 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 sir Dan, c- come with me. After all, I am a fair damsel inside this horrible forest. Can you please just come with me, Sir Dan? Please, I'll all right. greatly be your. I'm gonna look around for for Baxter. <laughs> yeah, Baxter, do you unveil yourself at any point or? Um. It. Baxter may have poked his head out just during the confusion. Is the mount still there? Uh, the demon mount? Yes. Uh, yeah, he's still there. All right. <laughs> Baxter oh, no. seems to seems to just wisp alongside the creature, placing a uh, hand upon its side and pan on the side. Well, friend, you come see me afterwards. You and me got some work to do, and I'm sure I can make you extremely happy. That and those knights seem a little pompous. I think you might have a bone to pick with them. When you really uh, do so, let me know. It snorts and stomps twice, and then it doesn't glare at you, but it glares at the other knight's horses and just, like, snorts angrily at them, like, <clears throat> and the horses all just kind of jolt a little bit. Um, yeah. That's what I thought. He... Now, this is a demon mount, so this is probably more appropriate. Pulls out what what appears, because it's actually a casting point. He needs it for casting. Pulls mm-hmm. out a piece of raw meat, hands it to the creature. Excellent. Oh, Baxter, there you are. We, we should probably get going. <laughs> And it's it's as as you all kind of make your way out, realizing Baxter has the sword and Sotari has lured Sir Dan away just because he's an idiot. Uh, <laughs> you see, you see the other knights uh, going in to fight the dragon, and the dragon roaring at them. Uh, and you see one of the other knights almost get nailed by the dragon, but one of the squires leaps in front. No, and then he gets <laughs> annihilated. He just gets oh. trashed. Wait, is it the that kid? Is, is it the kid? Because if it is, it doesn't get trashed. Uh, he gets thrashed. He okay, like, he's not a kid. <laughs> yeah, just barely not, unfortunately. Uh, and yeah, you guys all uh, make your way uh, away from this uh, now erupting fight scene. And oh, hey! you find yourselves just back in the pleasant forest. Back to uh, you, sly dog, you. This is why I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so sometimes showing might means outsmarting your opponent. Yeah, well, unfortunately, somebody's going to have to end up paying for the glassware. You know, glass urns are kind of expensive. Uh, Sir Dan takes off his helmet, uh, and you see, uh, like, a young kid, maybe in his, like, late, te- early, late teens, kind of hard. 15 or 16 years old. He's kind of got greasy, shortcut blonde hair. He's got a lot of freckles uh, all over his face. Uh, and he looks at you all and uh, says, Ah, thanks for getting the sword. Yes. Yeah. It's you are weird welcome. growing up again. This is really, I don't like it. <clears throat> the last adventurers I hired left me at the Fountain of Youth. 
Oh, oh yeah. kind of looks ah. down dejectedly. Uh, you know what, kid? It's all right. All that means is that you can grow up and get stronger than you were before. Learn more than you did before. Yeah, so no, Tari can... starts to... So Tari slowly starts to, like, inch away, because like, she thinks she was with that party. <laughs> <laughs> she was, I think. Yes, uh, now, son, I, I will... Now that you are an anointed knight of the conch, uh, we humbly... Ex- the church humbly accepts this donation of this wonderful sword. Uh, you are welcome at my Bartholomew's court uh, at any time, and thank you for helping found the church. Uh, yeah, no, that's not gonna hands. work, buddy. That's not gonna work, buddy. We're here for Bart Bucks and Bart Bucks only, not to get you some more recruits. <laughs> uh, Dan, so Dan looks at you. No, really, I, I need, I, I need that sword to, to show up, Arthur. Oh, oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, here, here you go. Uh, you have the have the right to take it from the grave digger. <laughs> no, I'm not touching that. Turtle's walking away. Uh, here, here's your money, and he gives you all, all deals are final. <laughs> he gives you all your Bartholomew bucks. You gain your uh, respective XP. It, and now. Back- do I understand this correctly, that he is... We've given him the... The sword is in his hand. He has handed sure. the Bartholomew box, yes? Yes, he's handed you the Bartholomew box. Oh, gee, you're attacking him? <laughs> oh, oh! How much health does he have? He's a kid. Probably if he's not a much. kid, uh, I mean... not enough. Otherwise, he would have done this on his own. No, he's got a lot of hit points, actually. He's got 54 hit points, bro. Wow. Oh. Yeah. He can yeah, see, I mean, it's, it's, it's just does wrong. this. Now, unless he knows magic, he has no idea what was the he No he idea. Looks out, he looks out of confused. Huh. That's a new one, kid. That's a new one. But I got what I came here for. <laughs> Baxter jumps upon the demon elk and rides off into the forest. Oh, yeah. Now, just as a point... I want you to remember this. Baxter has access to a mind-controlling crystal. He has a legion of undead, sentient undead, that are working with him. He now has a demon elk mount. Baxter's Baxter's going places. Uh, And with that, I Um, think... uh, I think I'm in love. That's all I gotta say. (laughs) Oh dear. Anyway, <laughs> oh, demon dear. <laughs> I think I think that ends our adventure tonight. Uh, thanks for playing, everybody. Goodbye, Peace. everyone. Good night. Hi, I'm here. Ah, oh, Pete is here. Excellent. Uh, for all of you that are here right now, would you like to buy anything from Bartholomew's shop? Chogoth, um... Baxter, or Sotaria? Uh, ah! if you'd like some time to think, you can always shop at the later shop or just chill. To 